Sometimes the episodes drop in on Mondays. It's the man, it's the man, watch that. 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 And welcome to the Matt Watch That Podcast, the place for reviews, rants, and randomness. I'm your host, Matt Sarosky, filmmaker, film fan. Each episode, I'm going to watch a movie or TV pilot that I probably should have seen but never got around to. It could be a recent favorite, critic's choice, or cult classic. Everyone can join in on the fun. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, at Matt Sarosky. You can subscribe to my YouTube page where I'll post videos and clips from the show. If you have any opinions on what I've discussed or suggestions as to what I should see next, use the hashtag MattWatchThat on social. Before we start, the holiday season is upon us. The weather has taken a turn. About a week ago, it was 70 degrees in New York. Now it's a holy hell 35 degrees with 20 mile per hour winds. But I don't mind the cold. Never have. I love wearing layers, and it hides the 10 pounds that I've gained during the pandemic. When you drive into town, you're starting to see decorations in the windows, on the street lamps. But I have to lodge a letter of complaint. I'm recording this on a Saturday, and I was driving to my physical therapy appointment. Don't be too alarmed. A couple weeks ago, I woke up and couldn't move my shoulder. Was in the most amount of pain that I've ever experienced for about 48 hours, when I saw the doctor, found out I have a calcium deposit right in my shoulder. He gave me a cortisone shot, prescribed me anti-inflammatories and muscle relaxers, and of course, physical therapy. So while I'm driving, there's a sign that says road work ahead. And these workers are out there, Saturday morning, putting up the town's Christmas lights. And I'm like, you couldn't do this at another time, like three in the morning? That's when they pave the highways. One day you ride along and the road's unfinished. It reminds me of the beginning of a roller coaster where you're going up the rickety... And then the next day, it's all paved, smooth, like nothing ever happened. Like the men in black just wiped your mind of the unpaved road. It turned a 15-minute commute into like a half hour because there was only one lane of traffic. But anyway, it got me to thinking about what marks the holiday season. What's that one thing that you go, ah, it's the holiday season? And for me, it's the Hershey's Kisses Christmas commercial, where they play We Wish You a Merry Christmas as bells. That's the one that puts me in the spirit. So what marks the holiday season for you? Hit me up on social media using the hashtag MattWatchThat. On to the main attraction. Each review will end with a ranking out of five stars. One star is Skip It. Two stars Watch at Your Own Risk. 3 stars standard fare, 4 stars worth checking out, and 5 stars must see. Now if I give a title 5 stars, it doesn't mean I'm comparing it to Casablanca, Jaws, or Seinfeld. I rank titles based on other movies or TV series in that genre and at that time period. So let's jump into it. These are my ruminations and observations of the pilot episode 4, Shit's Creek, from 2015. So how'd I miss it? Well, I was definitely interested in watching the show, but at the time, my cable provider didn't carry Pop TV, which was the network it originally broadcast on, and once it was available, it was already a couple seasons in. So I wanted to wait until it was completely done, and then I could binge watch it. It was created by the father-son duo of Eugene and Dan Levy, who also executive produce. It was directed by Jerry Ciccaritti, who helmed TV movies Holidays, Loves Complicated, Turkey Drop, and Angel Falls Christmas. The script was written by Dan Levy, who scribed the HBO Max original The Big Brunch. This is something to look out for. It's a family affair on Schitt's Creek. Eugene Levy's daughter, Sarah, plays Twyla Sands, waitress at Cafe Tropical. The series stars Eugene Levy as Johnny Rose, he was born and raised in Hamilton, Ontario, and went to McMaster University where he met filmmaker Ivan Reitman. He was cast in the musical Godspell and appeared with Andrea Martin, Dave Thomas, Victor Garber, Gilda Radner, and Martin Short. The musical director was Paul Schaefer. He's been cast in many comedies including Armed and Dangerous, National Lampoon's Vacation, Splash, and Serendipity. Catherine O'Hara portrays Moira Rose. Another Ontario native, she was an understudy for Gilda Radner at Second City. 
A versatile actor, she's appeared in comedies, Beetlejuice, For Your Consideration, A Mighty Wind, Dramas, Double Negative, After Hours, The Paper, Family Films, Chicken Little, Over the Hedge, Monster House, A Series of Unfortunate Events, and the perennial holiday classic, Home Alone. Daniel Levy plays David Rose. He started his career as a host of MTV Live and The After Show on MTV Canada. He appeared in the series Degrassi, The Next Generation, alongside Jason Mewes, before transitioning onto the big screen with the Tina Fey, Paul Rudd-led comedy, Admission. Annie Murphy performs Alexis Rose, another Ontarioan, or is it Ontarian? After graduating from Concordia University with a degree in theater, she moved to Los Angeles and appeared in a few low-budget films before receiving the script for Schitt's Creek. She's since continued in television with roles in Kevin Can Himself and Russian Doll. Chris Elliott acts as Roland Shit. He lived on the Upper East Side of New York and attended the National Theater Institute at the Eugene O'Neill Theater. He was hired as a production assistant on Late Night with David Letterman, soon appearing on screen in sketches and eventually moving into the writer's room. He starred in a sitcom, Get a Life, whose theme song was Stand by R.E.M. And the only thing I remember about the show. So the episode starts when the revenue agency of the government ransacks the palatial estate of the Rose family, whose members include Johnny Rose, CEO of video chain store Rose Video, Moira Rose, former soap opera star of Sunrise Bay, David Rose, a curator of art exhibits, and Alexis Rose, a socialite. The family is informed that they've been defrauded by their business manager, Eli, who's run off to the Cayman Islands, leaving them with years of unpaid back taxes and next to nothing in finances. The one asset that the government allowed them to retain was a small town that Johnny had bought back in 1991 as a joke birthday gift for his son. They can live there relatively cheap until they get back on their feet. It's a far cry from their mansion and upscale neighborhood. They meet Roland Shit, the mayor of Shit's Creek, who set aside for them two adjacent rooms in a rundown motel. Let the culture shock begin. Here's a quote without context. I just want a bathtub and a long extension cord. Shit's Creek is one of the easiest shows to watch. It's so breezy. It felt like I blinked and the episode was over. I actually binged a couple of episodes, though this review is for the pilot specifically. It's a funny show, and there's always one laugh-out-loud line, usually said by Moira. The situation certainly lend itself to comedy, and they've got the right cast to execute it. I wouldn't say that it's consistently funny, but it's consistently entertaining. There are funnier shows that have set-up punchline humor, but Schitt's Creek is definitely enjoyable. Sometimes it takes a couple of episodes to get a feel for the characters, but each one is well-established. You know exactly who these people are. And I think it would have been easy to make them dislikable with other actors, but no matter what comes out of their mouths, no matter what they do, you can't hate Eugene Levy and Catherine O'Hara. Scientists have studied it, it's a fact. I've heard from a couple of people that season one is the weakest, and I'm already enjoying it, so I'm looking forward to binging the rest of the series. Now for a little trivial trivia. Eugene Levy and Catherine O'Hara were members of the Second City Comedy Troupe and cast on the sketch show SCTV. They would play porcupines in Over the Hedge, singing partners in A Mighty Wind, and husband and wife in Best in Show. The cinematography was captured by Gerald Packer, whose filmography includes the television series Winona Earp, Van Helsing, and The 100. It was edited by Trevor Ambrose, who worked on Saturday Night Live, The Kids in the Hall, Killing Patient Zero, and 8-Bit Christmas. He was nominated for Outstanding Single Camera Picture Editing for a comedy series for the episode Happy Ending of Schitt's Creek. The score was composed by Mary Beth Solomon, who wrote the music for Lost. No, not that one. It's a movie. The Twilight Zone. No, not that one. The remake. Alfred Hitchcock Presents. No, not that one. Again. And Blue Planet. No, not that one. It was a short film. The runtime is 22 minutes. I give it 4 out of 5 stars. Add half a star if you enjoy these performers. They truly shine. Take off half a star if you don't speak sarcasm. Schitt's Creek was on for 6 seasons, 80 episodes from 2015 to 2020, and currently streaming on Hulu. 
It's won nine Primetime Emmy Awards, including a sweep at the 72nd Primetime Emmy Awards for Outstanding Writing for a Comedy Series, Outstanding Directing for a Comedy Series, Outstanding Lead Actor, Lead Actress, Supporting Actor, and Supporting Actress in a Comedy Series, and Outstanding Comedy Series. If you've seen Schitt's Creek and have opinions on the series, let me know what you think using the hashtag MattWatchThat. Moving right along, each episode, I'm going to post clips that I think people should watch. It could be movie trailers, music videos, interviews, or something completely random. Search for my YouTube page and there will be a playlist called Matt Watch That Playback. Leslie Margarita is an actress from Los Angeles, but she made her name, which is real by the way, on the Broadway stage. I had the pleasure of seeing her perform live as Mrs. Wormwood in Matilda the Musical, where I believe she was the longest-serving main cast member. She also played Mona Kent in Dames at Sea. She won the Laurence Olivier Award for Best Performance in a Supporting Role in the Musical for Zorro, where she played Inez. Off-Broadway, she appeared in Who's Holiday, Spamalot, Little Shop of Horrors, and The Flamingo Kid. Not only is she incredibly talented, but extremely funny. She did a behind-the-scenes vlog for Broadway.com called Looks Not Books backstage at Matilda, and it's so enjoyable to watch. You could tell she's fun to be around. She doesn't take herself so seriously, which is a great attribute to have. She's made appearances at Broadway Con and performed concerts in and around New York City. No matter the platform, she's always entertaining. She's got such great spirit and very sarcastic. So I've selected four videos that show off her remarkable talents. The first is a performance of the song Loud from Matilda. The camera work is a little shoddy, but you get the idea. The second is during Broadway Cares, when all the shows auction off specialty items. I'm not sure I've ever seen one as hectic and entertaining. The third was filmed at Feinstein's 54 Below, where they have themed nights, and this one was Broadway Princess Party, and Leslie performs as Mother Gothel from the Disney movie Tangled, and probably did it better than the original. She embodies that role. The last is a mashup of Taylor Swift's Mean and Sia's Titanium, which she makes seamlessly flow into each other. They're all available in the Matt Watch That Playback playlist on YouTube. Check it out. Now it's time for the recommendation. Yes, that's the word recommendation with Matt in the middle. I'm going to end each podcast with my own recommendation of a movie or TV series. Today I'm talking about Crazy Stupid Love. It was written by Dan Fogelman, creator of This Is Us. He also wrote the screenplays for Cars, Fred Claus, Bolt, Tangled, The Guilt Trip, and Las Vegas. It was directed by John Requa and Glenn Ficarra. The pair were responsible for the remake of Bad News Bears, Cats and Dogs, Bad Santa, I Love You Philip Morris, Focus, and Whiskey Tango Foxtrot. They're producers on This Is Us as well. I actually worked with Glenn's brother at VH1, very talented and savvy marketing strategist, really great guy too, but he liked to keep things on the DL, so I'd only ask about his brother when a movie was coming out. It stars Steve Carell as a sad sack who needs to get his groove back, Julianne Moore as a frustrated wife who has an affair, Ryan Gosling as a smooth-talking ladies' man who has his eyes set on Emma Stone, a lawyer with a fiancé, and Jonah Bobo, who's experiencing his first love. I really enjoyed this movie, and I forgot how much I enjoyed it. It never seemed to slow. It was funny, had heart. There were two twists that surprised me the first go-around, which made my enjoyment of the film even more. The finale takes place at a graduation, and I'm not one for public displays or grand gestures, so it makes me cringe a little, but by that time, you're invested in the movie. Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone have great chemistry. It's not surprising they've made two additional films together, Gangster Squad and La La Land. At one point, I wanted to slap Steve Carell in the face, then Ryan Gosling did, which made me laugh. I also wanted to mention Marissa Tomei, who is truly a phenomenal actress. I know a lot of people poo-poo, that is the technical term, poo-poo her Oscar win for Best Actress in a Supporting Role for My Cousin Vinny, expecting it to go to one of the British actresses nominated, but that was a star-making role, and she was perfect in it. And take a look at her filmography. The Wrestler, The Big Short, Slums of Beverly Hills, What Women Want, Untamed Heart, Wild Hogs, 
Okay, not all of them are gems, but she's had a very solid career. And I didn't even mention the new Spider-Man movies. Steve Carell originally wanted to call the movie The Wingman, because that describes the plot a little more accurately than Crazy Stupid Love. Either way, it's a really entertaining movie. In the genre of comedy romance, I'd put it up there. Maybe four and a half, five stars. Overall, definitely four and a half. There's not much wrong with this movie, so check it out. That's all for this edition of Matt Watch That. Thanks for listening to me babble. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Matt Sarosky. You can subscribe to my YouTube page where I'll post videos and clips from the show. If you have any opinions on what I've discussed or suggestions as to what movie or TV pilot I should see, use the hashtag MattWatchThat on social. Head over to MattSarosky.com for the latest news and updates. And come back next time for the reviews, rants, and randomness. He gave me a cortisone shot, put me on Russell Mal- Russell Malaxers, Jesus. And Leslie performs as Mother Goffle. Goffle? Mother Goffle. <laughs> and of course, the perennial holiday classic, Home Improvement. I keep on wanting to say Home Improvement. Home Alone. Home Alone. Home Alone. The Matt Watch That podcast is off next week, but if you need a fix, follow the Matt Forgot That podcast, which will be all new.